านะคะอันนี้เนี่ยเป็นในบับที่สองนะคะ So go ahead, go to the next slide. All right. So these are the prayers which we offer at the beginning of the program every week, every evening. So you can follow. I would just read them through. Um magyana timerandasya gyananjana shalakaya. Chaksur Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Nama Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Shremati Bhukti Vedanta Swaminiti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Kauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare All right, go ahead, Arjuna. Yes, go ahead. All right, so here we see the five subject matters which are discussed in the Bhagavad Gita. First of all, there is Ishwara, meaning the controller. And you can see in the picture Lord Krishna. Then there is the jiva, the living entity. We are all jivas. Jiva is the type of we're type, we're souls. Jiva atmas or souls. Jiva, and you can see that there's a picture of two forms. One picture is the super soul, and the other is the the individual living entity in the human form, form. but every living entity has, is a jiva, not necessarily only humans. Then the third thing is Kala, meaning time. Time is also discussed in the Bhagavad Gita. And then on the bottom, you can see Prakriti. Prakriti means nature. There's a material nature, there's also spiritual nature. So the Prakriti, there's uh, conscious Prakriti and unconscious Prakriti. All matter, material elements are made of prakriti, and no con have no consciousness. And then the fifth thing which is discussed is karma. So, of these five items, karma is the only one which is not eternal. All of the others are eternal. Okay, so these are the five subjects. So, go ahead, Arjuna. Oh, 
Okay, a little point about the, the, spirit, the spirit of the Bhagavad Gita. So it's in relation, just like if, we're, if we have a health problem, we go to the doctor and he'll give us a prescription, give us some medicine to take. We have to take the medicine according to the directions of the doctor. In the same way, we have to understand the Bhagavad Gita according to the directions of the speaker, meaning Krishna. If we just follow the Bhagavad Gita as we think it is or as we like it to be, we won't get the good result. We have to follow as Krishna speaks. Go ahead, Arjuna. Go back. Yes. Okay, just a little, we'll just explain briefly, we won't read this whole thing, but understanding of the Bhagavad Gita, we should understand there are three classes of transcendentalists. There's the Jnani, the Yogi, and the Bhakta. อันนี้ก็คือเอ่อผู้ที่เข้าใจพระวจิตานั่นเองนะฮะก็โดยทั่วไปแล้วนักคลิปนิยมเนี่ยก็จะมีเป็นพวกเอ่อญาณิโยก
Go back. Go back. First verse of the Bhagavad Gita, Dhritarashtra Uvacha, means Dhritarashtra is speaking. So if you look at the picture on the right, you can see the old man sitting up and he's a blind man and he's asking, he's speaking to his secretary, Sanjaya. Sanjaya is the one sitting down and he, San, he's asking Sanjay what happened at Kurukshetra. So, Dhritarashtra's 100 sons are fighting against the five Pandavas. And both sides have their friends and allies. So it's a big affair. There are millions of people involved taking part in the battle. So Dhritarashtra is blind, he cannot go to fight, but all of his 100 sons are there and he's anxious to know what are they doing there. So although Dhritarashtra is far away from Kurukshetra, with the help of the man Sanjay, Sanjay has, has been given a, a, a power that he can see what is taking place at Kurukshetra and Sanjay is able to explain everything which is taking place to Dhritarashtra. So the first verse said, Dhritarashtra said, O Sanjay, after my sons, and the sons of Pandu assembled in the place of pilgrimage at Kurukshetra, desiring to fight. What did they do? So Dhritarashtra is blind materially and he's also blind spiritually. He's very, very attached to his sons. And he wants very much that his sons should of course, he wants to see his sons win the battle and he wants to see the, the other side, the Pandavas, he wants to see them all killed. If the Pandavas are all killed, then his sons will be able to rule the kingdom. Go ahead. All right. So, describing Dhritarashtra, the blind king, he's not only material, materially blind, he's also spiritually blind. So if we follow a blind person, 
you can see in the, in the picture. If we follow a blind person, you can see two people, they're, they're holding on to each other and the person in front, he's also blind. So you won't get any good result if we're blind. If a blind person follows another blind person, you will not get a good result. So this was the situation at the time of the Kurukshetra war. It was 5,000 years ago the event took place. So, so because Dhritarashtra is blind spiritually, he's very biased and his mind is not strong, his mind is weak and he's very biased towards his own sons. He wants that his son should have the kingdom and he doesn't want to share any of the kingdom with the Pandavas. Okay, so uh, go ahead. So this is some information about Kurukshetra. Some of you may not know about Kurukshetra, but it's a it's a, an important place. It's a place of pilgrimage. And even the demigods come there to perform worship. And there was one incarnation, there was one avatar called Lord Parasurama. You can see in the bottom picture, Lord Parasurama wielding the axe. So he performed a great sacrifice because he, he killed many Kshatriyas. And so he performed his sacrifice there at Kurukshetra many, many years ago, even long before Lord Krishna. Go ahead. Okay, some more information about Kurukshetra. So the name Kurukshetra is named after a great king called Kuru. And Kuru, King Kuru came there to perform also yagya to he wanted that there should be very there should be eight virtues in the world so he came there to perform a great sacrifice to produce eight qualities eight virtues <laughs> So he was successful and Indra, the king of heaven, was very pleased with him and he gave a boon. And the boon was that if anybody did penance there at Kurukshetra, they could go to heaven. And the other boon was if anybody died fighting there, if there was a battle there, people died fighting, then they would also go to heaven. 
ครก็แล้วแต่ที่ปฏิบัติความบำเพ็ญเพียรเนี่ยเราก็ตายที่นั่นเนี่ยจะได้ไปสวรรค์หรือว่าใครก็แล้วแต่ที่ตายในสนามรบหรือการทำสงครามที่นั่นเนี่ยก็จะได้ไปโลกสวรรค์ So we can say this is why they chose the holy place Kurukshetra for the battlefield เราเห็นนะว่าเพราะฉะนั้นแล้วพวกเขาถึงเลือกสถานที่ Kurukshetra เป็นสถานที่สำหรับทำศึกสงครามในครั้งนี้ They knew that it's going to be a war many people are going to die But the, all the people who die, they're going to go to heaven. So Kurukshetra is a place not far away from the capital of India, New Delhi. It's about four hours by car if you go there. It's a Small place today. It used to be a much bigger place, but it's, a, it's still a, an important holy place of pilgrimage. So Krishna is speaking Bhagavad Gita there. Go ahead. All right, the third verse. This is uh, this verse is spoken by Duryodhan. He is saying, "O my teacher, behold the great army of the sons of Pandu." So expertly arranged by your intelligent disciple, the son of Drupada. Uh, สรุปที่สามนะคะตรัสว่าโอ้พระอาจารย์โปรดดูกองทัพอันยิ่งใหญ่ของเหล่าโอรสพันดุที่จัดทัพด้วยความชำนาญโดยโอรสของดูรพดาสิทธิผู้ชันฉลาดของท่าน So Duryodhan, who is the oldest son of Dhritarashtra. Of, I said he had a hundred sons, and Duryodhan is the head, he's the oldest, the most senior, and he's speaking to his teacher. His teacher is called Drona or Dronacharya. <laughs> So Dronacharya was a teacher. Not only of the sons of Dhritarashtra, he'd also taught the sons of Pandu. And he had other students as well, and one of his other students was the son of Drupada. Now there was a quarrel between Drona, the teacher, and Drupada. Go ahead. Right? You can see Drona. I'll go go back. What happened? Yes, yes. Yeah. So Drona, Dronacharya, Drona, he's a liberal Brahman. <coughs> But he had a quarrel. He had a quarrel with this king Drupada. <coughs> And he was he was defeated by Arjuna because Arjuna was a student of Drona, so Drona sent Arjuna to fight with Drupada, and Arjuna defeated him. So then, so then Drupada, after he got defeated, he did a yagya. และหลังจากที่โดปะดาโดน
สิทธิ์ของโดนัททำร้ายเนี่ยก็ได้ทำพิธีบูชา And the result of the yagya, two people were born from the yagya. One was Draupadi, and the other was d r i s t a j u m n a And d r i s t a j u m n a was born to kill Drona. So d r i s t a j u m n a was born to kill Drona, but still Drona took him as his student, and he taught him all the military secrets. ดิสตาดูนะเนี่ยเกิดมาเพื่อที่จะสังหารโดนะทั้งที่โดนะเนี่ยทราบสิ่งนี้อยู่แล้วแต่ก็ยังยอมรับดิสตาดูนะเป็นลูกศิษย์แล้วก็สอนวิทยายุทธ์ทั้งหมดให้ and Drona also had a lot of affection for his favorite disciple Arjuna และโดนะเนี่ยก็มีความรักพิเศษนิดหนึ่งให้กับศิษย์ที่ชื่อว่า Arjuna but now they've come on the battlefield And they're on opposite sides. Drona is fighting against Arjuna. And d r i s t a j u m n a is also on the other side from Drona. And d r i s t a j u m n a is born to kill Drona. Go ahead. Okay, so these are some of the signs of victory, which uh, to encourage. The Pandavas. There is something. Although the Pandavas have a smaller army than the Kauravas, right? The two armies is the Pandavas and the Kauravas. The Kauravas are the 100 sons of Drit Dhritarashtra, and the Pandavas, the five sons of Pandu. So the Pandav Pandavas have a small army. <laughs> พันดาวะนะคะก็คือฝั่งโกราวะเนี่ยก็จะมีกองทัพทหารเนี่ยเยอะมากแล้วก็ฝั่งพันดาวะเนี่ยจะมีกองทัพไม่เยอะนะ But there are some signs to encourage the Pandavas which indicate they're going to win the battle แต่มันก็มีสัญลักษณ์นะคะมีสัญญาที่บ่งบอกว่าฝั่งพันดาวะเนี่ยจะได้รับชัยชนะ Right. First of all, the Pandavas have Lord Krishna on their side. Krishna is not going to fight, but he's a chariot driver for Arjuna. And because because Krishna is on the side of the Pandavas. That means the blessings of Lakshmi, the goddess of fortune, are also there for the Pandavas. Another good sign is that Arjuna has Hanuman on his flag, on his chariot. แล้วก็อีกสัญญาณหนึ่งก็คืออร์จุนาเนี่ยมีธงของฮันุมานอยู่บนราชรถของเขา So Arjuna prays to Hanuman that just as you fought for Lord Ramachandra, bless me that I can fight here at Kurukshetra for Lord Krishna. และอร์จุนาก็ปรารถนาต่อฮันุมานนะคะบอกว่าเหมือนกับที่ท่านเนี่ยคอยช่วยในศึกสงครามของพระรามจนสามารถชนะทศกัณฐ์มาได้ขอให้ข้าพเจ้าก็สามารถชนะเพื่อกฤษณาได้เหมือนกัน And then another sign of victory is the conch shell. This, when they begin the battle, just prior to beginning the battle, the different uh, warriors they blew their conch shells, and the sound of the conch shell 
the conch shell is a symbol of Lord Vishnu, so that's suspicious for the Pandavas. And another factor in the favor of the Pandavas is the battle is taking place at Kurukshetra, which is a holy place. It's a, a place of Dharma. So that's also in the favor of the Pandavas because they're very Dharmic people. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead, Archon. Yeah. All right. So, going up to text number twenty-one, twenty-two, Arjuna is speaking to Lord Krishna. Arjuna said, "O oh, infallible one, please draw my chariot between the two armies, so that I may see those present here who desire to fight." and with whom I must contend in this great trial of arms. ตอนนี้ตรัสว่าโอ้องค์พระกวาดผู้ไร้ความผิดพลาดโปรดขับราชรถของข้าไปอยู่ท่ามกลางระหว่างกองทัพทั้งสองฝ่ายเพื่อข
เช่นนี้แล้วเนี่ยเราจุนะก็รู้สึกเจิตใจเนี่ยไม่ค่อยดีนะรู้สึกว่าเอ้ยจะต่อสู้กับญาติหรือว่าคนที่ตัวเองเคารพแบบนี้ได้อย่างไร Go ahead and here you can see how Arjuna reacts to the situation ตอนนี้เราก็สามารถเห็นได้ว่าออร์จูนาเนี่ยจะรู้สึกยังไงนะแสดงตนยังไงกับสถานการณ์นี้ที่เขาเจอ These different symptoms are all described there in the first chapter of the Bhagavad Gita อันนี้เป็นอาการเหล่านี้เนี่ยเป็นอาการของออร์จูนาซึ่งซึ่งได้อธิบายไว้ในบทที่หนึ่งของภาควัตคิตา Now Arjuna is not a coward it's not that he's afraid But he just wants. He's he's just concerned that he should do the right thing. Arjuna, เนี่ยไม่ได้เป็นคนขี้ขลาดอ่าแต่ว่า Arjuna แค่รู้สึกว่าเขาเนี่ยควรที่จะทำในสิ่งที่ถูกต้อง So the reactions in his body are like this. That his his hand, his body is trembling, his hair is standing on end. การก็คือมีแบบว่ารู้สึกร่างกายเนี่ยมีการสั่นปากแห้ง and the the famous bow which he was carrying the Gandiva bow it falls he is a he puts it down he's not able to hold it in his hand แล้วก็ธนูที่เขาถืออยู่เนี่ยที่ชื่อว่า Gandiva มันก็หลุดลงไป so he says he said he's very confused he said my mind is reeling I see only causes of misfortune. So Arjuna is in this condition. What should he do? He is thinking it's not good to fight. Go ahead. And here we see Arjuna's arguments, different reasons why he doesn't want to fight. First of all. He has compassion for his friends and relatives. He doesn't want to have to kill people who are his friends and relatives. He doesn't want to have to fight with them. He thinks this is not good. And then, second reason, he said, "I no enjoyment. Even if I win the battle, I won't enjoy." Now, everything we do, there has to be some enjoyment for us. Otherwise, why should we bother doing it? We should be able. If we can get any pleasure from doing something, we'll think why I should do it. Then the third thing, fear of sinful reactions. Arjuna is thinking, if if I take part in this battle, certainly I'm going to fight. I'm going to kill people, injure people. I'll I'll suffer for for that. I'll get reactions for it. Then 
So devotees always worry about sinful reactions. They're very cautious to avoid doing anything sinful because they know the reactions will come. And then the fourth thing, destruction of the family traditions. Arjuna is concerned. If I kill the if the older people they go to war and they get killed in the battle, then when the old people die, then there'll be nobody there to encourage to do the to keep up the family tradition and the people will become irreligious. And when the people become irreligious, the women will also become irreligious, they won't be protected, and you'll get unwanted children. And then they'll give up all the welfare projects and the family, they'll give up all the community activities, all the traditions will stop. So Arjuna said, this is another reason why I don't want to fight. And then the fifth reason, he said, I just don't know if I should do it or not. I can't make up my mind. Arjuna thinks, if I'm going to do it, I have to be convinced that it's right. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. So Arjuna, compassion. Arjuna was a soft-hearted devotee. He's overwhelmed with compassion, forgets himself when he sees his relatives before him. He has become fearful due to a material conception of life. อันนั้นขอแลกนะคะก็คือในส่วนของความเมตตานั่นเองออริจินัลเนี่ยรู้สึกเอ่อเป็นสาวกนะคะเขาก็เลยมีจิตใจที่อ่อนโยนแล้ว
หนึ่งในหนึ่งครอบครัวเหมือนกันนะหรือเป็นหนึ่งในครอบครัวเหมือนกันแต่ว่าซึ่งถ้าเกิดว่าสังหารพวกเขาเรานั้นทั้งหมดเนี่ยก็คือมันจะน่าจะต้องได้รับบาปแล้วก็ต้องทําให้ตัวเองไปนรก Go ahead destruction of the family Arjuna further argues the destruction of the dynasty will lead to unchaste women unwanted children and the end of spiritual culture ข้อสี่ก็คือวัฒนธรรมครอบครัวเนี่ยถูกทำลายซึ่งถ้าเกิดเราไม่มีวัฒนธรรมครอบครัวลงเรืออยู่แล้วก็จะทำให้เกิดผู้หญิงที่ไม่มีความซื่อสัตย์แล้วก็จะทำให้มีเด็กที่ไม่พึงปรารถนาเกิดขึ้นในสังคมแล้วก็จะทำให้วัฒนธรรมทิพย์เนี่ยที่ครอบครัวปฏิบัติกันอยู่เนี่ยมันก็จะหายไป So you can see Arjuna has a lot of good reasons why he doesn't want to fight สามารถเห็นได้ว่า Arjuna เนี่ยมีเหตุผลที่ดีว่าทำไมตัวเองถึงไม่อยากจะต่อสู้ One more go ahead Oh <laughs> Okay, now, so uh, text 45. Better for me if the sons of Dhritarashtra, weapons in hand, were to kill me unarmed and unresisting on the battlefield. In Salukhi 45, ผู้มีอาวุธครบมือมาสังหารข้าขณะไรอาวุธและข้าพเจ้าจะไม่ตอบโต้ในสนามรบ So you you can see Arjuna's mood that he's thinking you know I, it doesn't make sense for me to fight better they just kill me อันนี้ก็เป็นอารมณ์ความคิดของอาจุนะในตอนนี้ก็คือรู้สึกว่าข้ารู้สึกว่าตัวเองเนี่ยจะไม่ต่อสู้อะไรละถูกถูกฆ่าถูกสังหารยังจะดีกว่า Go ahead So Arjuna having thus spoken on the battlefield cast aside his bow and arrows and sat down on the chariot his mind overwhelmed with grief สัญญากล่าวว่าหลังจากอาจุนาตรัสเช่นนี้แล้วที่สมรภูมิเนี่ยอาจุนาก็ทรงวางคานธนูแล้วก็ลูกศรลงข้างๆแล้วนั่งลงบนราชรถภายในใจเต็มไปด้วยความเศร้าโศกเสียใจ Now it's interesting Arjuna put down his bow the Gandiva Arjuna had vowed he would kill anybody who told him to put down his bow อันนี้เนี่ยเป็นสถานการณ์ที่มันค่อนข้างแย่มากๆเพราะว่าความจริงเนี่ยออร์จูนาเนี่ยเป็นนักรบที่มีความมั่นใจมากแล้วก็บอกเลยว่าใครก็แล้วแต่ที่บอกให้เขาเนี่ยวางคันธนูที่ชื่อว่ากันดีว่าลงเนี่ยเขาจะสังหารคนนั้น So you can see in the picture in the slide on on the the right here you see Lord Krishna sitting on the chariot with Arjuna and Arjuna is just so confused he doesn't know what to do แล้วก็เราสามารถเห็นได้ในรูปนี้นะคะก็คืออริจินาเนี่ยนั่งลงบนราชรถแล้วก็ทำหน้าแบบเศร้าโศกเสียใจไม่รู้ว่าจะทำอะไรตอนนี้ So he's been thinking about the situation he thought about it carefully and he just thinks it's not right he thinks he shouldn't fight เราเรนาก็เริ่มรู้สึกว่ามันไม่ถูกต้องนะเขารู้สึกว่าเขาเนี่ยไม่ควรที่จะต่อสู้แล้ว But it's come on the battlefield. It's come into the middle of the battlefield, and everybody else is ready to fight. And then Arjuna's thinking he doesn't want to fight. So Arjuna is fortunate that he has Lord Krishna with him, and we will hear. In the next class tomorrow, we will hear how Lord Krishna counters the arguments of Arjuna. แล้วในวันต่อไปนะคะคลาสวันต่อไปเราก็จะมาฟังกันว่า Krishna เนี่ยจะให้กำลังใจ Arjuna หรือจะสอน Arjuna ว่าอย่างไรบ้าง Okay, go ahead. All right, recap. The main points from the first chapter: 
We heard about blind Dhritarashtra. We heard about the significance of Kurukshetra. And we explained different signs of victory for the Pandavas. And we've been hearing about Arjuna's symptoms and finally Arjuna's reasons not to fight. เอ่อความตาบอดทั้งในมุมมองของทั้งคลิปแล้วก็โลกวัตถุของดินตราสตราสาเหตุที่อรุณาให้ว่าทําไมตนเองถึงไม่อยากจะต่อสู้โอเคโซโกเฮดอาร์จูนิ่งอัพเน็กซ์เดอะเน็กซ์คลาสนอตเน็กซ
And that's mentioned in Bhagavad Gita. Why did he select Arjuna to speak Bhagavad Gita? Because Arjuna was both his devotee and his friend. So certainly Arjuna was already devotee. All the Pandavas, all five Pandavas, they're great devotees of Lord Krishna. They're self-realized before the battle of Kurukshetra. So Arjuna was this he was born by the semen of Indra in the womb of Kunti. And so his father was very great personality, his mother also very great personality. And he has the association of Lord Krishna. For, for a long time they were friends together and they would discuss philosophy together. So it was not that just at the time of battle of Kurukshetra that they discussed philosophy. Arjuna and Lord Krishna would regularly meet together and discuss philosophy. So the Pandavas are very dear to Lord Krishna because they are such great devotees. But Krishna chose them to speak just for our, for our benefit. Wherever Krishna goes, Arjuna goes with him. And wherever Krishna goes in different universe, Krishna will speak Bhagavad Gita and Arjuna will be there with Krishna. Prabhupada explains, he said, just like when the girl gets married, and she goes to stay in her husband's house. So the mother, the mother-in-law, the uh, her husband's mother, she will not instruct the, da the daughter-in-law directly, but she will instruct her own daughter. And in this way, she'll get the message to her daughter-in-law, because she knows the daughter-in-law is new and she's away from home, so she's emotional, and so the mother-in-law makes it easy for the daughter-in-law by instructing her own daughter. So the same way Krishna instructed Arjuna for all of us. All right, there are many hands up. We have to answer these questions. Let's hear the other questions. Yes, Okay. เอ่อคําถามต่อไปนะคะขอขอบคุณครับคงสวัสดิ์ครับคงสวัสดิ์ครับคงสวัสดิ์ครับคงสวัสดิ์ครับคงสวัสดิ์ครับคงสวัสด
ถึงยอมร่าเนี่ยพาขึ้นไปบนสวรรค์โอเคค่ะ Guru Maharaj his question is why Gorava they attend the heavenly planet and uh, Pandava they have to see the hell Uh, the Pandavas, yeah. the Pandavas, they they didn't have to see hell. They they went back. The Pandavas went back to Godhead in their same body. Uh, and Srimad Bhagavatam it describes the Pandavas go back to Godhead in their same body. พวกเขาเนี่ยได้ไปรูปคลิปกับร่างเดิมของเขาในบอกว่าตำได้บอกไหม The devotees never have to see hell, so Pandavas don't see hell. แต่ว่าสาวกเนี่ยคือไม่เคยไม่ไม่ต้องเห็นนรกเพราะฉะนั้นพันธวัตเนี่ยพวกเขาเนี่ยไม่เคยไปนรกหรือว่าไม่เคยเห็นนรก Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, "My devotee will never perish." Krishna ne dai trap vai ne pagwat kita vai le ra va sa va kong ka ne ta mai mi wan thu tham la. So Krishna would never let the Pandavas go to hell. Pa cha nan Krishna ne ta mai mi wan hai po Pandava ne tong pai na lo. The Kauravas, they go to heaven. They don't go to the spiritual world. Okay. Yes, good. Yeah. Okay, นะคะคำถามต่อไปนะคะของมาดวีปาวณีค่ะ Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. I'm going to Shri Prabhupada. Ha, ah, come from. The reason, I want to know the reason why the Bhagavad Gita is so beautiful and beautiful. Now that it has been translated into three languages, จากที่อาราจนะกล่าวถึงเหตุผลต่างๆที่ไม่อยากจะสู้รบมีเหตุผลที่บอกว่าการทำลายผู้นำครอบครัวจะทำให้วัฒนธรรมเนี่ยถูกทำลายลงจากเหตุผลนี้เลยทำให้วัฒนธรรมค่อยๆเสื่อมลงหรือเปล่าคะประมาณนี้โอเคโอเคคุณมาช์ her question is when uh, she said like like we can see now nowadays we In the family, we don't really have the uh, people don't really live in a traditional way. Is that because of the uh, the reason Arjuna gave here that is the destruction of the dynasty? So that's why it happened. It like this. And what was the culture that we used to have before, and we we can't see it nowadays that have disappeared. Yes, right. We've lost the culture which we used to have. It often happens that the young people they go away from the home, they lose the connection with the elders, they go separate, they go independent, and they lose all their culture. อย่างเช่นตอนนี้เนี่ยคือเด็กเด็กที่ยังไม่บรรลุนิติภาวะเลยเด็กที่ยังเด็กอยู่แต่ว่าแบบโตหน่อยเป็นวัยรุ่นอะไรอย่างนี้เขาก็จะออกจากบ้านไปแล้วก็จะไปใช้ชีวิตอยู่อิสระโดยที่ไม่ไม่ปฏิบัติตามวัฒนธรรมของตนเอง Arjuna was concerned you know that if they fight the battle and all the elders all the seniors die 
in the battle, then nobody will keep up the tradition. All the culture will be lost. And when they forget the, the culture, then they take up the irreligious habits and they become sinful. They engage in so many sinful activities. So we're trying to bring back the tradition, the culture, the, the old ways. The old ways are better than the modern way. Okay. Yes. Go ahead. Okay. Krishna Guru Maharaj Dhanavapanam please accept my humble obeisances or glory to Sri Rapa เอ่อคําถามของพี่อ่ะค่ะเอ่ออ้างอิงจากการเรียนคลาสกีตาร์ทางก่อนนะคะที่คุณมหาราชบอกว่าเอ่อมีสาวกท่านหนึ่งที่
You don't want to go in the forest. So you have to be practical. You have to be intelligent and understand what to do. ควรที่จะปฏิบัติอย่างไรกับสถานการณ์ที่ตนเองเจอเยสฮัลโหลกิชะคือพี่อ่ะเอ่อแบบเจอตะขาบเจออะไรอย่างเงี้ยที่เป
เหมือนกันนะคะออร์จูนาเนี่ยก็เป็นเหมือนกับตัวอย่างสถานการณ์ให้เราเห็นแล้วก็สอนเราด้วยว่าเวลาเราเจออะไรอย่างนี้เนี่ยเราควรที่จะทําอย่างไรเหมือนกับที่ออร์จูนาทําก็คือถามเกรชนาสมัยอมสมัครเป็นลูกศิษย์ต่อท่านนะคะเราก็ควรที่จะถามผู้ที่คอยนําทางหรือว่าให้คําแนะนําในชีวิตเรานะคอยถามว่าเราควรที่จะทำยังไงปฏิบัติ And in the absence of Krishna's representative, we have the Bhagavad Gita, which is Krishna's own words. So we take shelter of Bhagavad Gita. We can all be guided by. Sadhu, Shastra, or Guru. Thank you. 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 I saw you raise your hand, and now, but now no more. Okay, there's no more questions. All right. So then we. Be my lady. Hi, Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Yes. Can I have one short question? Yes. Ah, Ajna, we just ask that. Ah, just now, Guru Maharaj said that there is a prakriti that has two prakriti. Two prakriti means two parts. One is the parts. ที่หนึ่งมีเจตนาแล้วก็ประเภทที่อีกประเภทหนึ่งไม่มีเจตนาพวกปกติที่ไม่มีเจตนาเนี่ยสิ่งมีชีวิตเขาพวกเขาใช้สิ่งมีชีวิตหรือเปล่าปกติที่นั่นเจตนามีชีวะอยู่ในนั้นไหมครับชีวะมาอยู่ในนั้นไหมครับสิ่งมีชีวิตโอเคคุณมาชาร์ question is regarding the Parkirti that you explained earlier about uh, you say have two Parkirti, one is uh, something I forgot. Yeah. And but... her question is the second one is that is that living entity also including here? Yeah, in Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes there's two kinds of Prakriti. There's the para Prakriti and the apara Prakriti. Right? One is superior. The superior one has consciousness, just like all of us, living entities. We are also Prakriti. And the inferior prakriti is the inert matter, like you know the table, the house, the the, the furniture. This is all prakriti. They don't have consciousness, Guru Maharaj. Right. Earth, water, fire, air, ether, these things, these five elements, as well as mind, intelligence, false ego. This is called, this is all Krishna's prakriti. This is the inferior prakriti. But then in the next verse, Lord Krishna said, there's another prakriti, which are the living entities. And we are trying to enjoy, we are trying to take all the material energy, we are trying to take it for our own enjoyment. Right? 
We are thinking, this is my land, this is my house, this is my car. Actually, everything belongs to the Supreme Lord. Everything is His. It's not ours. We come with nothing. When we come, when we take birth, we have nothing. But in the course of our life, we want to claim, this is mine, this belongs to me. So this is why we get problems. Because we're trying to be the proprietor. Any Thai people there with a question, no? Yogeshwar um, always there. Yogeshwar? He's not very Thai. Uh, I think he's Thai, but yeah. Yogeshwar and Sakshi Gopal Prabhuji and Sri Devi Mother. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Guru Maharaj, I know. Oh, not Yogeshwar. Sorry, Guru Maharaj. It's Yogita Mother. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> I really like Yogeshwar. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Should okay. I go with it? Okay. Yes, ma'am. So, Shaikh Shigopal Prabhu is a question? Okay. Should Hi, I go on? Oh, I'm sorry. I'll go to Shigopal Prabhu. Maharaj, uh, is this just relating to your answer to that Purnamasi Mata, uh, Sana Purnamasi Mata uh, question? I just wanted to know that, you know, uh, We've been hearing this, that, you know, nothing is belongs to me, all is belongs to Krishna, right? And even we practice, we try to chant, you know, personally, it's almost a decade that I, I've been in Krishna consciousness. But however, I try to think, Maharaj, but somehow it comes to me that, you know, it's mine, it belongs to me. So will this be gone by the time or what should uh, we do to cut this? Uh, from uh, our mind. Okay, come to from Rosi Naha, Hamwa, a Suan Ki, Maratra by Makini Naha, what one thing and out and I love me never many a life in Hula, Bala Mesama, our life by that. Ting Mala, the Nikam Rutum Nina, Ting Mala, the Sword Mon Lutama, like a lot that the Loga young Nikam Kit Waman Pen Hong Lao, Nama, and even Pen Hong Shanali, Quam Kitum Nina, and you may hide by. Yes, good, very important point, good question. That in order to get this uh, idea out of our mind that we're not the proprietor, that's why we have to do things like acts of sacrifice, austerity and charity. We have to cultivate this detachment from the material and the way to become detached is by offering everything to Krishna. We have to regularly contribute
to the service of Krishna, either contributions or by physical service. Otherwise, we'll just simply remain attached. Yes, okay. Thank you very much, Maharaj. So let's hear what Yogita has to say. Yes, Gurudev Harbal. Gurudev, um, a lot of people get confused when we tell them uh, that one should not claim that this is mine, that is mine. And then they always come up with questions like, if I don't claim things are mine, everybody in the world is going to take over them. What do you expect us to do? I mean, how do you explain the part when you have to tell people that in front of the Lord, we shouldn't claim this is mine or that is mine or, you know, that not have not been able to explain properly as yet because I myself don't understand how to explain it properly, Gurdjie. Uh -huh. Okay, People then... People with such questions, so it's really a problem that way. You have to explain to them that it all belongs to Krishna that, and you're using it for the service of Krishna. So it's not yours for your enjoyment, but it's for using for the pleasure of Krishna, for Krishna's enjoyment. Mm -hmm. Okay, we don't let anybody just come and take everything away from us because it belongs to Krishna and we're using it for Krishna's service. So we have to take care of it for Krishna. So that means basically materially, materially, yes, they can claim that it is mine in front of other people, but only that externally they don't have to let people know. At times it's harmful to tell people that we're using it in the service of Krishna. But uh, that internally, that is what they know. That that is the answer that they have, right? Is that the point? Well, I don't know quite what you're saying, but you know, the main point is we want people to understand that it's not mine, but I'm using it for the pleasure of for the service of Krishna. It belongs to Krishna, so I take care of it on behalf of Krishna. It's given to me for Krishna's service. Krishna has given it to me for his service. So I'm using it for his pleasure, not just for my own pleasure. Mm. Okay, we have to go on. Now Sri yeah, Devi has Sri. one question. Sri Devi Sri. Maharaj Ji. Yes. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Srila Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisance, just all glories to Srila Prabhupada. My question is regarding the same thread of discussion we are having now, same kind of discussion we are having. This is regarding decisions adult children make, say above 21 years old, they make some decisions. As a parent, we are not happy with some life decision they want to make. So uh, can we say that they belong to Krishna, so they will make their decision? Or how do we uh, attach ourselves or detach ourselves from some very uh, life decision they wish to make? Something concerning their life, it's an important decision. So how Guru Maharaj, they are above 21 years old. But they are not, uh, they, are, they, are, they are like um, well-wishers of Krishna consciousness, but not practicing Krishna consciousness themselves. But a well-wisher, we can say. Well, whatever decisions they make, they make it influenced by their own upbringing. It's their own upbringing which has allowed them to develop that kind of attitude or consciousness. So you cannot just simply uh, 
think it's, uh, you know, their fault or something. You know, you're also involved in it because you brought them up. You arranged for their thinking, their mental conditioning. In your home, you're, you've been living with them all your life. You know them. So you've had a big influence on their lives. And they've developed this pr particular attitude to things. You cannot think it's just simply them. You have, you have to accept, you know, this is how they feel, it's up to them, you know. They get to that point, 21 years of age, and then they're, okay, they're on their own. You can't, you can't, they're not children anymore, they have to make their own decisions. And they'll learn by their own mistakes. If it's wrong, then they'll learn by their own mistakes. Uh -huh. Okay. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much. Archana, did you want to translate? Yes, Gomez, I can briefly. Okay, I'm not going to talk about what you want me to do. I'm going to talk about what you want me to do. I'm going to talk about what you want me to do. I'm going to talk about what you want me to do. I'm going to talk about what you want me to do. คุณแม่เนี่ยไม่ค่อยพึงประสงค์เท่าไหร่แล้วในการตัดสินใจครั้งนี้ของเขาเนี่ยเราก็จะควรที่จะทํายังไงดีแล้วควรที่จะไม่ยึดติดไปหรือว่ายังไงนะคะบุรุมาราก็ตอบว่าอันนี้เนี่ยในการตัดสินใจหรือการใช้ชีวิตของเขาเนี่ยก็ส่งผลมาจากบุคคลที่เขาเจอรอบข้างหรือว่าสิ่งที่เขาทําเนี่ยมันทําให้เขาเนี่ยมีความคิดในการตัดสินใจในสิ่งที่ต่างกันไปแล้วเธอก็ถือว่าเป็นคนที่มีส่วนนะเหมือนกับเพราะเขาเนี่ยเธอเลี้ยงเขามาตั้งแต่เด็กเพราะฉะนั้นเธอจะรู้ดีแล้วก็สิ่งที่เธอทําให้เขาได้เจอกับผู้คนหรือว่าได้อะไรอย่างนี้นะมันก็ทําให้เขามีความคิดอย่างนั้นเพราะฉะนั้นเธอก็ถือว่าเป็นคนที่มีความรับผิดชอบกับกับตรงนี้ด้วยเนื่องจากเป็นผู้ปกครองเพราะฉะนั้นเอ่อก็ต้องดูต่อไปว่าจะก็แล้วแต่ผลการของใครของผมโอเค this is last question you know Maruji what's your question Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj please accept my humble obeisances Uh, Hare Krishna, dear devotees, is the uh, disappointment in the material world, maybe desperation like Arjuna, are necessary for Krishna consciousness? No, it's not necessary for Krishna consciousness. You don't have to be disappointed. We hear there are different reasons why people come to Krishna consciousness. Some come in distress. Some come in search of wealth, some come out of curiosity, come, some come in search of knowledge. มาดีก็ถามว่ามีความจําเป็นไหมที่คนที่จะมาในกฤษณะที่สำนึกเนี่ยจะต้องมีความคิดหรือว่าความสับสนเหมือนกับที่ออร์จูน่าเป็นใช